CJ, get up here and break them down. Break down. Ah, football. This spring is for us again the beginning of the formation of a new team. Over a quarter of your team and the leadership of your team is gone. And so you have to reshape, but there is new personalities that are now forced to step in front. This is my most recent poem called One Lone Soldier. One parent disappears, no one knows why. He fled this dreadful scene. But the premature must know because he doesn't stop to cry. The mother thinks it's all a dream. In this dream appears reality, slapping her in the face. Within reality was actuality, providing her with grace. One lone soldier. I grew up in Kent, Washington. I never had a father. I think that really built the person who I am, other than my mom, of course. My mom always took care of me, and so I said, I always want to make sure she has whatever she wants when I'm older. I started to look beyond just like what I have. I was like, my mom's doing so much and she doesn't have much. So I was like, I got no excuse at all. Like I have a great mom, I have a great foundation in my life. My brother was always there for me, my grandpa was there for me. I was gonna be the first one who actually went, out, went to college out of high school. So that also got my mindset too, said sky's the limit for me, but I'm nowhere where I wanna be. I was like, I got a chance to do something big. I got a chance to really be like the, for me, the, the face of the, the family basically. All right, it's 10.30, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My major is marketing. I'm taking statistics to business ethics, accounting to upper management can let an analyst know. Because when I first stepped foot in a business class and they start to like listen, like to listen to what they're going, what's going on, just listen to the materials. Your income statement is based on a contribution margin format. It kind of put me in shock and I started to sit back like, do I really want to do this? But once I said that, that's when I knew I did because I'll always love a challenge. I always love a challenge. So when I, when I start to doubt myself, that's when I knew it was the right thing to do. That means I have an outflow on the cash budget of 12,000. The kids in my class is how bright they are, how intelligent they are, I mean, it's unreal. I mean, I'm at Notre Dame. This is one of the best institutions in the country. So I gotta be compete with the top. I mean, future CEOs, future doctors, future mathematicians. I mean, the criteria we have is, is, uh, is unreal, like second to none. I always thought if I had my undergrad to do over again, I would try to do plays be a totally different character. When I first got here, I, I said I was open to try new things. I believe life is like, it's something to explore. Why put all your focus in one thing? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm taking an acting class called the Voice and Movement. Making sure you're walking with intention. You can have starts and stops. If you don't know your body, you can't act. So I think so far in this class, that's what I'm learning from. It's just, it is acting. Yay. That's cool. <laughs> I was in a play my freshman year. I wasn't even planning on auditioning for that play. The cast came out, I was like, okay, I will check it out. Who, who, I wanna see who got who made the cast. You already wrestled George Armstrong. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Kevar is unique, I mean, with the fact that he really likes doing theater and acting. We got a chance to go watch him last year. Been in, I mean, all the secondary, some of the receivers, linebackers. When I got on stage, immediately once I got on stage, keep on, I was like, oh, I almost broke my fourth wall. We called the fourth wall. You got to look beyond everybody. I just heard keep on, I think I did glance. I was like, uh-oh, there they are. It was exciting to support. Like I said, every night we at least had like three guys from the team come. I mean, it was just great to kind of see him, you know, really performing in a different setting off the football field. I knew he was talented in a lot of areas. You know, obviously we know about one of his leads in the play last year. This is a world where uh, imperfection is actually good. If you work towards imperfection, I think you'll be more perfect than you want to be. And that's what it is. I'm just free. I and mean, that's what I love about it. Through my experience here at Notre Dame, those are really the type of guys that are really attracted here, number one. That lack of fear, in my opinion, leads to greatness. I like to recruit those kind of guys that when they're here, they're locked in, they're focused, but when they leave here, I want them to be a student athlete here at Notre Dame that has other interests and other desires. Him going and performing like that just goes to show Kavar is a prime example of that. People just know me from the football field, not necessarily what I do outside, so this is this is my second run, I believe. <laughs> going into the football world, I gotta go into like a different world again. Hey, pick up the energy. Let's go, bro. 
that world is totally different from the other two because you have to be perfect. Oh my God. If you're not working toward perfection, why are you playing? We need to be perfect on every one. I agree with Kavari. I think that the feel definitely does demand some sort of perfection. Finish, finish. If he's gonna play off, why not expand the defense as much as we can? Get some width over there, away we go, right? Corey Robinson is just a, an incredibly gifted human being on so many different levels. Good job, Corey. Great job with your hands, Corey. From a football and athletic standpoint, with the traits that he has and the catch radius that he has and the ability that he has to compete for the football in the air, you couple that with a brain that functions at a high level all the time, it speaks to the type of total person he is. Get a hand in here. One on three. One, two, three. Boom. Hustle to class. Hustle to class. Hustle to class. So as a college football player, people don't understand that I have other dreams, <laughs> have other aspirations. I love drawing. This is my roommate, Brian, and it's like the first one I did of him. Just a quick one with charcoal. The community here has really have just opened up their arms to us and seen us as more than just like distant athletes. So I wanted to try to, you know, affect the community in a positive way. And I thought, what's the best way to do that? What were some of the promotion stuff that didn't work and the stuff that worked really well? You know, like first hundred yeah. kids getting a scarf. I thought being an athletics rep would be a good way to try to help the community grow closer together. If you had a, a cookie cutter and you could cut out what a Notre Dame football player should represent, Corey Robinson, Kavari Russell, those would be pretty good guys to make your cookie cutter out of. Yeah, on the field, it may just seem like me and Kavari are just two football players trying to do each one of their jobs. You know, I think there's more to than that. Me, I have a left brain. If I don't get there, I'm gonna go to this right brain. If I don't go to the right brain, I'm gonna go to this left brain. And that's why I write poetry. Poetry relieves the stress that, that builds up from school, studying hard each and every night. I didn't know that poetry was something that he did as well, but it doesn't surprise me. I'd love to be able to hear it. Perfect love is given when you haven't been gave. Perfect love is caring when you haven't been cared for. Perfect love is telling when you haven't been told. Perfect love is helping when you haven't been helped. Perfect love is accepting when you haven't been accepted. Perfect love is showing the ropes when you haven't been shown. Perfect love is loving when you haven't been loved. Perfect love is the thought of loving someone imperfect, perfectly. Well done, well done, well done. You know, when we're talking about where we are in, in year five, if we have to talk about big picture things, hustle, if we have to talk about work ethic, if we have to talk about commitment to being the best you can be, we're in year one. Hey, nice touch. Love your touch to that, Everett. Nice throw, nice touch. That's clearly not where we are. So now what are we talking about is the things that go to winning. And the things that, for me to go to winning is the attention to detail. So you're gonna release first, but you gotta gain width with this, okay? Now, you don't wanna get in here at all. So we'd like to push him and then get to him, but you gotta see your work. You guys got that? And I, they don't tell me whether it's zone or man when I, when I call it. So I can't, I can't give you a definitive answer. And so that's really my focus uh, on the field, coaching our guys, uh, and really sometimes making it simpler. Add a new offensive coordinator. Set, go! Better, better, good, good. And a new defensive coordinator. Hands ready. 
There you go, nice drill. Go get it. That's it, that's it. To the cone, to the cone. And everybody's got to find their own role on offense and find their own role on defense. So there's a lot of work going on right now in the spring. Play 10, seven on seven. That's actually it for seven on seven. 11 on 11. When we're talking about putting together a staff, it's shared philosophies. Scott, play six. It's not about resume. It's, it's more about somebody that I know that shares a similar philosophy in player development. And, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, it was easy. Uh, Mike Dembrock is somebody that goes back 25 years. We were roommates together as graduate assistants back at Grand Valley State. Uh, we've come up together in this business. Yeah, just balance them off inside and outside. Or tell them to rotate in and out. So that made it easy for me to, to name him as the offensive coordinator. Number A, Mike, 11, go switch B drive. 1987 rolls around and here comes uh, a guy from Boston, Massachusetts to kind of share the same office and be in the same situation that I was, which at that time was a graduate assistant's position. Let's go right hash. And built a, a tremendous friendship and a foundation that has really stood the test of time. Matt, flip the quarterbacks with the centers. And then bringing in Matt LaFleur as our quarterback coach. Move to the boot opposite. Good with that. Matt was a graduate assistant for me at Central Michigan. You know, these are guys that I've had a great relationship with, I've worked with. We share the same philosophies as it relates to how we want to work together offensively. See, my biggest worry is two slants, one high. We'd have to game plan him. You know what I mean? And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Brian Van Gorder was my very first hire as a full-time head coach at Grand Valley State. That was the start of a, of a long friendship over many, many years. Brian obviously has had an incredible career, and so when I had the opportunity that I could hire him, it was, it was a pretty easy decision because we had such a long history together. Match him, match him. Nice job, nice job. I think that both of us carry that characteristic, you know, the idea of respect. We had a tremendous working relationship, and, um, you know, we went through times and grew together. Brian is a head coach. He's the same guy. You know, obviously, we're older, so I don't, I don't mean to overstate that. But in respects to, to those character traits that I mentioned, he's, he's, he's the same guy. You're assuming that unless you see something into the boundary differently. You got it? I think when we talk about the recent hires in Matt LaFleur and Brian Van Gorder, with their NFL experience, Matt LaFleur has coached Robert Griffin. He knows what that NFL quarterback needs to develop. Brian Van Gorder's coached the, the, all the defensive players in the NFL from the linebackers to the DBs. He brings that perspective. It is a nice perspective to have in our program in year five, in year five. As we have built it to that level, um, I, think, I think this would have been premature uh, in year one because we were so focused on um, building the, uh, the ground floor and, and the organization and um, the details. But now that we've got a lot of those things, I think the timing is right for both of these guys here. We gotta go, we gotta go, Brian. Get a break, get a break, get a break! And I think the most important thing now for us is to continue to educate our players on why they're here. And they're here to, number one, get a degree from Notre Dame, number two, to win a national championship, and three, then to take that to the next level, whether it's Wall Street, uh, or med school, or the NFL. And those are really, um, the priorities and, and if they get out of line that's where we have to continue to educate them. Here we go, count me on two, one, two. So all of those things are going to come to you at Notre Dame, but they gotta come in the right order. If you have those priorities in order, there's no better place than Notre Dame. Seventy-eight and seventy-eight. 6042. Win 73 and 78. 79 and 8. When we got here, we wanted to make sure that our pro day was done in the same fashion and everything else is done here. It was detailed, it was organized. If you got questions? Ask us. Okay, should run smoothly. You know, we'll get through the testing pretty fast. It was professional and it was Notre Dame. So hang loose here, we'll do lightweight here in a minute. All right. I'm looking forward to pro day. Uh, just another opportunity for for the guys who went to the combine to, you know, just give the coaches a closer look. 
There were nine Notre Dame football players at the Combine, which was third out of every school in the country. Going down to the Combine and showing up with nine people, um, you know, credits Coach Kelly and, and you know the organization and how we're moving in the right way. As far as getting prepared for the NFL, I think Notre Dame did a great job as far as putting you in the spotlight and putting the pressure on. Uh, being in a winning program has a lot to do with getting signed. So our guys understood that when they got a chance, they were representing on this day, not only themselves, but Notre Dame. Combine and Pro Day, it is completely about numbers. It's just a part of the process, you know, they want to see those numbers. Last time out here as MD guys in here, count on me. Go ahead, take it. Count, count on, on me on two, two. one, two. Count, count on me. me. Uh, for me, Pro Day is going to be a, it's going to be a mental game with myself. A lot of teams don't understand how fast and you know, just my overall speed, so I'm excited to show that off. Tommy Reese is going to throw some good balls and catch some ice. There's things that people don't know that they're going to see and it's going to help people and, and, and really allow them to you know, fulfill that dream. For this pro day, like I'm more excited to see my fellow teammates perform more so than me and the guys that already went. The one person I'm most excited for is uh, Kona Swinky. He was one of those guys that played a big role, but you know, doesn't get his name out there. You know, I can't wait for the scouts and GMs to see how explosive he is. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I feel like through the past few years, being able to watch pro day and you know see how you know, our past teammates go through the day and how, you know, all the scouts come, head coaches, position coaches, GMs, uh, just seeing that big, you know, group of people, you know, in the loftus where we're performing. That's the great thing, they opened the pro day for us. So I've, I've been a pro day for the last two or three years and watched my teammates compete. And, you know, we have an idea of how many people are gonna be there, who's, you know, who possibly could be there. And, um, you know, again, playing at Notre Dame and. You know, you're playing in front of 80,000 people at least every week on national television. Going in and working out for 30 minutes in front of some scouts is nothing. Go. You know, last year's Pro Day had 16 players sign and 16 players work out. And we expect the same to happen this year. Every time I walked into Loftus, it gives me a lot of joy, to be honest. And still to this day, I am very uh, apologetic for what I did. When I went back out on the practice field, you know, I just really thank my family and uh, my ND coaches and, you know, the players as well. So Notre Dame family has been tremendous as well. Though I messed up, they still had my back. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very appreciative for that. It's obvious to see that, you know, the term family is used a lot, you know, when it comes to football and uh, teamwork and that type of thing. But um, I will say, I can't speak for, you know, any other schools, but I will say that here, um, it, it, it's, it's a true testament to, uh, to that. I look at Everett Golson and I see a kid that took responsibility and I go, I want to work with him. I feel you, coach. <laughs> I want for Everett what I want for all of our players, really, and, and that is I want them to be the best that they can be so that they can find in themselves that highest level, whatever that is in them. You guys ready? All right, let's be on target. You definitely get the spotlight being a, a Notre Dame quarterback. It's going to move fast, okay? We're going to call the game fast. It's going to be... That's how we're going to move. And we've got to have you guys react in the same way. That spotlight definitely can either be really good or really bad. All right, good job. All right. QBs on two, one, two. QBs. If you really want to know what I have to live up to, you can just look at our walls um, in the group.
it's a whole bunch of guys that accomplished a lot. And that's not talking about just the present, but that's talking about going back from the old times. The Sports Illustrated is in the hallway. Definitely, I react to it as like, wow, like those are the guys that were great here. And those are the guys that made a big impact at this university and on this football team. And I see myself a lot on those Sports Illustrated because I understand that, you know, what they went through is similar to what I went through in every day in terms of working hard and balancing the classes and balancing the social life. And their ability to balance that and, and still be great shows a lot in their character. Someday I want to have my place on those walls. Being here at, at Notre Dame, there's a lot to live up to, but uh, all in all, makes you a better person, makes you a better competitor. So I think I go at it with the goal of, you know, yeah, these guys are on the wall, but you know, someday I want to be there too. I think the great part is that the legends are really the living legends around Notre Dame. You see them on the walls in the quarterback room, which is being guys that have been there, done that, and have had great success at it. And it's something that every day you walk into the meeting room and look at them and be like, I'm going to be on that wall, or I'm going to be you know, mentioned in the same sentence as those guys. And that's just the mentality that you carry that, that really promotes the tradition of Notre Dame and it, make it, it makes it so strong. If you do it the right way, you'll be on these walls in this hallway. And you'll be memorialized, you'll be revered, uh, you'll be looked at and thought about every single day. And I think that that is part of the history and tradition of Notre Dame, is to be thought of and revered and respected, that you did it the right way at Notre Dame. And so um, it's not just about the helmets behind me, but it's part of it. It's part of that process. It's getting your degree from Notre Dame. Uh, it's being part of the community. It's helping us win football games here at Notre Dame. And I think that that's what makes Notre Dame unique.